Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Uh, my name is Dean Castle from the University of Nebraska. Uh, we're talking about automated tracking of student behaviors and the iMinds project. And why do you want to track student behaviors automatically? Uh, first one, uh, knowing more about how students behave, then we can actually better decide on the appropriate pedag pedagogy, hopefully mapping the, the correct teaching strategies to uh, the specific student learning characteristics. So this would hopefully improve instruction as well as improving, uh, improving uh, student performance in the classroom. And tracking of you observable student behaviors can give instructor or help instructor obtain a good enough modeling of student learning processes. We know that even with experienced instructors, there's no way they can have 100% perfectly accurate modeling of student learning process. But hopefully with tracking of observable behaviors like these, can actually facilitate or support that kind of uh, modeling. And finally, uh, automated tracking can be achieved with some loss of accuracy. Uh, this is what assume that this, we assume that uh, even with some loss of accuracy, automated tracking can still be achieved to enable intelligent educational systems to support learning and instruction. And what we mean by supporting instruction, for example, we can help an instructor manage classroom activities. And it can also help an instructor monitor individual students or groups, especially when the room is, let's say, 200 students in a chemistry, intro chemistry class, or even with students in remote areas distant for distance learning. And we can also help an instructor assess the performance of individual students or groups for group activities, real-time group activities or uh, offline discussion boards, how well the students are participating in those discussions. And we can also ar archive classroom activities for future references. We can also archive knowledge or expertise involved with classroom activities. For example, uh, a teacher might customize how he uses the CXP platform or applications. And those that, that customizations actually can be considered as uh, knowledge or expertise involved with that classroom. And to support learning, we can actually help a student manage collaborative classroom activities, for example, uh, to form peer groups, peer support groups. This is especially true for distance learners. Uh, distance learners, they, sometimes they have dropout rate, a high dropout rate because of loneliness. They're out there somewhere by themselves, and if they, and finding, uh, studies have found that if they stay through the course, they usually will do well because they are motivated. But a lot of students, remote students actually drop out. So if I have a system like this, CXP can actually help retain those students, help bring classroom uh, environment to those students in the, in the remote areas or di in, at distance. And we can also help students in individual learning, once again also archiving classroom participation and annotations, uh, likewise for future references. And what's the impact of automated tracking of student behaviors? Uh, to us, I mean, the way I see it is it can facilitate accurate evaluation of tools and applications. For example, if I uh, invoke conference XP chat room, and after I invoke it, I just run around and surf the net, do other things, and while the discussion is going on in the chat room, uh, in that case, for example, if you want to evaluate whether the student is using it correctly, is this student actually thinking about how to respond to the messages, or simply just doing something off topic? Uh, so one way we can Automate track, uh, automatically track these behaviors, then we can actually have better uh, uh, evaluation of better e uh, evaluation of tools based on accurate tracking of the, how they were used. And we can also enable intelligent decision support. If you know we can track student behaviors automatically, we can actually inform those students or inform the instructor who is not doing what, or who is doing something that is not supposed to to be doing. And we also provide another approach to, also this can actually allow us to have another approach to student assessment. And finally, we can also facilitate simulations for, for example, software testing and algorithm testing as well. The framework, uh, in our framework, we are thinking about 
for each agent, uh, for each student in front of the student has is a laptop or computer uh, through which it uses the CXP platform to collaborate with other students and as well as interact with the instructor. So in terms of behaviors, we look at student individual behaviors. Basically, they work on their own. They don't uh, interact explicitly with other students. Then there's also student-instructor relationship. Student-student behaviors and also student in a group. And some students, they tend to feel very comfortable if they are working with their buddies, good friends. But if you put them in the strange group, or group they're not uh, familiar with, it's, sometimes they'll do tense up and not, not, not uh, uh, perform well. And also, we can actually also track group behaviors, uh, group instructor behaviors, and group to group behaviors as well. And what attributes to model? Uh, we look for key performance indicators for learning in the literature. And for example, uh, motivation, self-efficacy, learning styles, communication skills and styles, interests, prior knowledge ability uh, refers to, for example, problem solving ability, learning ability, uh, some logical reasoning ability as well. And then resourcefulness and leadership. These two are usually reported as the two most important indicators uh, in the literature in terms of predicting how they will learn uh, in the classroom. So motivation and self-efficacy. And what can be tracked? And another question then is, what is worth tracking? Uh, the more you track, the more you have to store. The more you have to, you know, so the more you have to track, the more you track also the more you have to consider when you uh, build a decision support system, for example, to support a uh, collaborative environment. And we also have to think about different modes of interactions. For example, free form chat, Reform chat between a student and an instructor, question answering between students and the instructor, group activities, and, and so on. So I have some examples here. So for example, free, free form chat among students. We track, we can track multi, uh, number of messages between students, types of messages, uh, topic starters, responses, questions, clarifications. We can also have, for example, we uh, classify the messages into whether this message this string is a clarification string, whether this string is a contribution string, whether this string is a questionnaire string. And we also track message threads, how they theme together, message keywords, response times, number of chat forums participated and participated concurrently, and so on. And we also have, uh, this for this mode, question answering, we also look at number of questions asked, types of questions. For example, uh, you may want to think uh, view that a how question is more important than a what question. Uh, so quality of a questions, keyword matching in terms of relevance and also for example if an instructor discard your questions so maybe your questions are not that good but if instructor answer your questions then probably your questions are worthwhile to be discussed in the classroom. And there's question threads, question keywords and response time as well. And share digital whiteboard among students. We are actually looking into, uh, because we are looking at a whiteboard controlled by a token. So whoever see, uh, if, you, if token is not seized, then everybody can contribute to the whiteboard at the same time. But if somebody seizes the to token, then that person is the only one who can write on the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. And then you can release the token. And so we can actually use that. This mode allows us to track the amount of time tokens Seized, number of objects drawn, type of object drawn, and for example, quality of objects drawn. Let's say you always, whatever object you contribute to the whiteboard would get deleted or erased by your other, other, other students in the, in the discussion. That means maybe your, the quality of the object is not that good. Uh, also, number of edits made. Your edits hopefully is accepted or discarded, modified, and response time as well. And this is just... We, we, are, we are not doing anything in this area, but just some possible uh, attributes we can track for audio video content mode. And then, once we have that tracked data, we have to map it to the attribute. Uh, just now, for some motivation, self efficacy, learning styles. Uh, we'll give you some examples here. So, behavior attribute mapping. So, motivation value of a student S is proportional to, let's say, quick response time by S in various modes. So if a student responds to the discussions very timely, very quickly, oh, the student is considered to be motivated. 
and number of questions asked by S to instructor in the session, number of topics started by S. So if a student initiates a lot of discussions in the forum, hey, this student probably is, has a higher motivation than other students. And number of messages by S in response to other messages as well. So this is one way. Uh, of course, as you have more and more mode, and you have different equations of different combinations of these. And of course, also for different types of uh, situations, for example, for K-12 students, your motivation value and measurement might be based on different data compared to high school or college, uh, college kids. So the S response time that you're talking about, mm -hmm. is there any measure or any way of quality of, of response? Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes, this, yeah, we, we try to put it. This in somewhat another, 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 another attribute. Uh, so we'll see it over here, I think, not here yet. So for self-efficacy, uh, it could be inversely proportional to the questions asked by S to the instructor in the session. Because usually, for example, we say students who with low self-efficacy because of low confidence in its own ability uh, would tend to be shy in terms of asking questions. So probably the number of questions below. And also number of authoritative actions, for example, ratio of edit to others' input over the editing things own input. So it's like, hey, I'm good. Whatever you say, this is not right, it's not right, I'll edit it. So this is authoritative actions. So we can usually use this to measure, uh, to, to approximate self-efficacy in a student. And we also have some leadership value, for example, of a student S is proportional to the number of edits made by S during a whiteboard discussion, number of tokens seized by S during a whiteboard discussion, and then released without prompting from other students. So see, because it's different, if you hog the discussion and other people, other participants are, please release your token, then probably you're not a good leader. Uh, but here, if you seize and then you release without prompting, maybe a sign of good leadership. And then, for example, number of messages by S during a free form chat that occur near the end of the message thread, which could be wrapping up the discussion. And we also have, definitely have to look at the quality, the content of the message as well. And also, if, you, if the student asks questions on behalf of the group to the instructor, then we can also see that as a leader. So we have all these examples, and we are now, we have tried, we have started build, uh, combining them into in terms of from behavior data to attribute uh, mapping. So we are doing this. Not finished yet, it's still uh, ongoing work. Now, what is IMIND? IMIND stands for Intelligent Multi-Agent Infrastructure for Distributed Systems in Education. We couldn't fit the E in there, but because it's just IMIND, it looks, uh, sounds good enough. And it was originally funded by the National Center uh, Insight at University of Nebraska, 2002. And the overarching goal, very simple, but it was very ambitious too, very vague as well, to help teachers teach better and to help students learn better. Uh, so it's very vague how, I don't know. Uh, and the underlying approach, however, is to use multi-agent intelligence, because my research area is multi-agent systems, and especially multi-agent systems that uh, learn how to improve their performance over time. Uh, and the original implementation is in Java. Uh, and so this framework is a group of interacting agents performing tasks for their peer users, so teacher agent, student agent, and group agent. Uh, the group agent is available in the Java version, but still uncertain in the CXP version because we could not find a place to spawn the group agent to, s to run around by themselves without a user. Uh, so we're thinking about how to do that uh, elegantly. Uh, so this is just a, a diagram. So students interacting with their individual student agents. Instructor has a teacher agent. And the student agent would talk about themselves, or discuss, I mean, the students would discuss, to collaborate through the agents, uh, CXP applications. And they can also ask questions to, of the instructor. And then if they form a group, a group agent will be spawned to take care of that group and will go away once the group it dissolves, and so on. So this is our IMIS framework. And a teacher agent uh, is responsible for disseminating information streams for the teacher to student agents, maintaining profiles of all students, and I mean, through their profiles, assessing the progress and participation, participation of different students. It also ranks and filters the questions asked by students. 
and also manage the progress of the classroom session. What do we mean by uh, question ranking? So it also learns how to rank questions. So in the beginning, uh, if let's say students ask questions, and let's say 20 questions in the time in the in the span of five minutes, and based on parsing and keyword matching and heuristics, the the agent actually ranks them. This is the better score. This is the best question all the way down to a uh, worst question. And so the teacher can actually choose to answer them. And through this action, the agent actually performs reinforcement learning. So the teacher, if the teacher chooses to answer a question that is ranked low, that means the agent thinks, ah, I must have done something wrong. This is actually a good question by ranked it low. So I have to penalize the, the, the rules or weights they give it a low score to begin with and reward those they give it given it a high score and so on. So this allows us to actually learn new keywords. Which we learn new keywords, we all also adjust keyword weight. Uh, in the Java version we also have rules, but we haven't put them all waiting over here yet. So we are looking for rules as well. And then also the teacher agent also provides a virtual classroom, computes statistics on students, displays them, and alerts teacher on problematic students or Groups. I'll show you some snapshots after, uh, later on. And also allows a teacher to search, a database search of all the tracked data, and including messages and metadata as well. And a student agent is responsible for profiling the student, exchanging information with other agents, and computing statistics to help a student form a dynamic body group for the student. We see a body group, uh, an affinity group of students where, with whom uh, the student interacts most often because of high responsiveness and profile compatibility. Uh, when we did this with our Java version, the, we also had an option for students to actually specify whom they want to be buddy with because they are their buddies. Uh, they want them to be in there, even though they said, well, they never answered any questions I asked, but I want them to be in a buddy group. And so, because uh, ultimately we were looking at this as a, if you apply this to distance learning, Distance learners, they don't have contact with students, I mean, with other, their peers. This will be a good matchmaker system, matchmaking system. And, and we also compute body group statistics, trend analysis, together with basic statistics for everybody in 13 attributes. For example, we have self-dialogue improvement. That is, how, what's the percentage of contribution to your, the topic that you started? Compared to other dialogue improvement, how much you contribute to other topics uh, started by other students. We also have DB search, uh, to keyword-based metadata search for all messages and so on. And in terms of capabilities, in February 2006, we have question answering, body group, group chat, video manager, and video manager plus. And question answering manages uh, question answer pairs between students and teacher parses question keywords for tracking, and you score them automatically. And scoring is also learned over time to adapt to changing uh, classroom conditions, so you learn new keywords. And also, the teacher can actually enter keywords to begin with. I should remember uh, back in 2003, when we had Java version test, uh, the instructor, uh, he, we, we did it in the class uh, teaching GIS topics. And the instructor actually entered a bunch of keywords. And he said, I don't know the ways. So he put some arbitrary weights in there. But as the lecture goes on, went on, he started picking questions. And at the end, he said, hey, now my, not the knowledge is now learned by the system. He went back and said, yeah, even though, I, he, even though he did not know explicitly beforehand what weights to be given to the keywords, afterwards, through his actions answering questions, they discarding questions real time, he found out that weights. So that was good. Uh, and body group allows chatting between students for collaboration, stores dialogues as themed message trees for classroom support, and provides a also a statistic, uh, statistics module so students can see how well they are doing, and also group support. And group chat, this is, uh, this is, uh, we learned, this is a good experience actually. We released it with uh, CXP version 3.2 at that time. It was a very good learning experience for us to go through something like this. Uh, the testing, the actually making sure it actually works correctly. 
and woo, and later on we have we, we do something else. We actually put our website now, so release uh, the software that way. Allows the user to manage several group discussions at once, and the user only gets to see messages from the groups that he or she joins. So you can, if you're interested in the group that discusses uh, KU basketball, I'm from K. I mean, my automotor is Kansas Jayhawk, so I'm, I'm, or Nebraska football. So you can actually join two groups, and so you can you get to see the message from the two groups. So participants who are not interested in Nebraska football, you can subscribe only to. KU basketball will get, will get to see only messages from that group. And, and then video manager allows teachers to choose which streams are viewed by users. So uh, this design was f such that, uh, that everybody has a, let's say, assume everybody has a webcam and video, videos are being streamed and multicast, but the teacher has the control to choose, oh, I think this guy has something to say. Let me channel hit the stream to everybody so everybody gets to see or this guy or otherwise you don't you don't allow them to be broadcast i mean to be to be viewed the streams are still be being broadcast and also allows students to request that the video streams be shown and then we also have a video manager plus we actually stop at the center work on the center uh, uh, side to allow teacher to actually block video streams from being broadcast so this cuts down on um, bandwidth uh, usage so there was our IMIS 1.0 capabilities uh, back in uh, February 2005, so six. And then we continue with IMIS 2.x capabilities, because we have 2.0, 2.1, things like that. We have improved question answering, improved body group, and we have new functionalities, for example, uh, database search, virtual classroom, stat chart, and it is, was released May 2006, and since has been used by Dalville University, because actually we were, look, we were working very hard trying to get them ready, get this ready for Dalville University as the second largest online university in the country after Phoenix. And too bad they use only one capability, because this, the instructor said, hey, I don't care about those, I just want to do this one. Uh, so they use, I think, only question answering. <laughs> uh, but he, he loved it. He, his, after the first course in the summer, now he's using it for fall now. Uh, so we hope, hopefully, we'll get more people uh, to to use it, and we. Huh? That's built on top of conference X. Yes. So they're using just one capability inside of conference X. Yes. Yes. Yep. And we added ability for teacher to send answers to all students instead of just the original asker. We also allow the teacher to broadcast or announce messages to every student. We also made it possible. This is because of offline and synchronous learning instruction. We realized that the instructor could actually review questions. Oh, I, I thought this was a bad question during the class. Now, I think it's a good question. I can re promote it back to the question list and answer it. So this is, this is from our working actually uh, reward deployment. They found all these nice things to have. So we keep adding features to it. And body chat uh, is a name change from body group. And we have two types of relations. One is symmetric. If A is B's body, then B must be A's body as well. Also, another one, this allows, to, allows the student to be unfaithful to his body group, to go out and scout out new collaboration partners, can actually kind of eavesdrop on the other group's discussion. And he thinks, oh, this is really, really good. They are very responsive. Let me, oh, let me jump to that group, things like that. And so this also we introduce the maximum number of bodies. So this allows the teacher, the instructor, to say, okay, form groups, no more than uh, 10 people each. So things like that. So it's limited. And we have DB search, provides queries based on all messages in our data. Uh, and we also have message trees for each message uh, so we can actually display. Click on one, boom, 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 all the messages come behind after it. And we also allow users to search for participants and their messages, so it can provide search for body group membership as well. And the virtual classroom uh, provides a one-stop overview of the classroom for teacher. Uh, shows all messages sent and topics started for a specified number of sessions. Also shows color-coded statistics, so alerts. It has two views. Uh, we can actually provide the statistics by students, also statistics by the body, uh, each body group. And stat charts allows you to view the value of a specific statistic for all students and also allows the teacher to view the value of all statistics for a specific student. 
And then MS 3.0 capabilities. Uh, this is uh, recent work. We just froze the code November 1st, just a couple of days ago. We received from LD Miller, also one of the students uh, working on this project. And we implemented parametric uh, general multicast PGM protocol. Um, we also significantly improved the database design. We have a straight form <laughs> merge capability, <laughs> improved the uh, DB search stat chart. We also have a structured chat capability. Uh, we replaced UDP networking stack with PGM, and we did a preliminary test with six. Uh, actually, we did it with uh, uh, one time with six uh, laptops in the going up three floors of a wireless network, uh, with three floors of building, and also one time with 34, 34 laptops in another building, and 99 percent. But we do encounter some latency problem because of the recovery. We'll talk about this later. We also provide late joint support. Uh, automatically retrieves messages that have been sent before. So if you come to the uh, venue late, uh, and then once you join, the messages that have been going on before you, your arrival will be sent to you. And so this, this looks pretty OK. Uh, and database was vastly changed and reorganized to allow for more tracking. We added a classroom perspective. In the beginning, we only had a session pr perspective. So for each session, we track the following things. And now if you have a classroom, a classroom may consist of multiple sessions. And a student may belong to multiple classrooms. So it can track a student's behavior in different classrooms as well. Because some students may be very, very motivated in math, math class, but might be very, very unmotivated in, let's say, physics class. And so you can track that. Keyword tracking over time to see how topics fluctuate and body group management actions so they can actually see you can see how they change their bodies over time for different classes and so on. And merged capability, we call it because we combine all capabilities into one, so allow sharing of data between capabilities. Uh, this allows to track uh, uh, what, age, uh, what a single student is doing uh, better. We also move, we, we, uh, basically we moved all capabilities into distinct forms, and then forms are selectable when the user starts the capability. And so this merge, and then for DB search, we split it into two versions because we want to protect, uh, basically, we want to prevent this from happening. Some users probably they will just uh, they try to let's say they join one group, but they kind of scavenge and try to find all what other groups are doing. So they so we want to protect that. Uh, so uh, with that, so they cannot look for messages or search messages from other users uh, that are not in their body group. And teachers, the teacher version retains all functionality. And stat chart, uh, we modified it to allow teachers to chat each statistics for the body group instead of just for all users. And structured chat, uh, similar to body chat, except groups are assigned by teachers. For some teachers, you usually say, hey, I don't want the students to go through this group formation in the class, because it didn't take at least five minutes. Giggling and smiling and laughing and running around. I just want to, before the class starts, I set it up, and then, so then when I announce it, they know they can only go to the, talk to those uh, students in the, in the body group. And in terms of track data pre 3.0, we have these things, and this is some of them. As this is a concise representation, we track actually more than that, more than these. And then for 3.0, we added classroom view, uh, structure groups view, body group management view, and we also uh, timestamp the keyword. And then 3.x needs to be added, uh, keywords for, for body chat, keywords per user, agents believes, tracks over time. Because the student agent will model uh, its user, whether it's a responsible user, or uh, a motivated user, a user with high leadership, things like that. So this will be tracked. So see how the students uh, perform over time. And UI interactions, offline messages between users, and statistics, and so on. So there's still a lot of things to, to do. And here are some IMIS examples. This is a structured group uh, chat. So this actually, it took place. This actually took place. And so you can see this is the message they see, and then they can respond to, and then they can send. Uh, and then this is a question answering. So as a teacher, I see this uh, in the class. So they ask questions. And I was able to do this to so some questions. For example, some students said, I. I, I don't want to ask stupid questions, uh, but I do have questions. 
so they, they don't want to ask in the class in front of everybody. So this is a very good thing for them. But when I open up this for everybody to use, when they have laptops on the desk, they start, some of them actually start abusing the system by surfing the net and things like that. Uh, so, and then this is database search. You can actually have, for example, session number, from which session to which session, the score, the, the, the message uh, ranking, uh, receive time and things like that, answer, receive, discard. You can search for questions. You can also search for students. And this is a message tree that we have. It will pop up. If I find a message tree, I click on it. This will pop up to show the, the message tree. So you can actually follow the discussion, the theme discussion. And this is our virtual classroom. For example, in this case, we have five, one, two, three, four, five, five uh, attributes that we are looking at. So one, two, three, four, five. So blue means good. Red means below the thresholds. So then you, you set your own thresholds. Uh, the instructor gets to set their own thresholds. And so you can actually click and look further into what the student is doing. And we can check number of sessions. Uh, By the way, one of them is dropping out of the class. <laughs> uh, and here, this is, uh, an, uh, for example, attribute, the 13 attributes I talked about for the person uh, named Alex. And as you can see, the blues are good. Red is below thresholds. So it also change the thresholds. And we have session messages, average session messages, things like that. And so this way, for example, I look at it, I look for red stuff. I so, said, oops, aha, uh -huh, this guy. Uh, QA, for example, QA is questions asked. This guy asked two few questions in the class. And, and this is for all students, uh, so what, uh, about average session messages. Uh, messages. Uh, and issues, what are issues? Uh, this is our basic approach. We instrument CXP, the complex XP plus I minus capabilities. The logging is done by the sender. Before every message or drawing or event is sent, the sender copies the relevant data to a centralized database. Uh, it prevents duplicate entries since all participant transmissions are multicast. And also, we always store them. In the, everything is stored in the database. So, database is, so after the session is over, it's still there. Everything is persistent. Now, uh, problems with database usage. Query maintenance. Uh, we ran into a big problem. I think uh, Adam has a very good example. One time we had a query that's like two pages long, just to get to something, and took forever. And so he has to manipulate them, massage them, finally combine them into once. And it took from how, much, how, from how long to how long? Yeah, it, uh, it, this is actually the second part. What happened yes. was is for, that, for the uh, virtual classroom, to display all the statistics for everybody, you had to run a query for every single statistic for every user. And so when we had 30 users or so, it took up to two minutes to yeah. actually compute all that. And so what I did is I just combined all the queries into one and ran a union on them. And then I could, could get, within like three seconds or so, I could actually find every single yes. So this is, uh, and so we, so one, one thing about this is we, we need careful crafting of multiple queries into one to increase speed. So uh, in terms of possible solutions to make this better, moving queries, for example, moving queries into one organized location or one class. Uh, tracking with CXP, uh, we talked about this before just now. Different capabilities cannot share data directly, and so we need to use multi-forms within one capability for different modes. So we, for example, we, com we combine them into one so we can track them. And Possible solutions, for example, a generalized agent class embedded in CXP. We are, always, we are, we are looking for, if it's possible to implement a class in the CXP, we can just call, and this one will take care of monitoring all capabilities by the same student. This is looking for this. this. <laughs> and we also have storyboard merging at runtime, for example, uh, given events coming from different uh, capabilities merge them together and make sure this is, is sync, is sequentialized, is ordered correctly. Uh, and then we also have this problem with off-task activity tracking. We want to be able to do some off-task activity tracking outside CXP. For example, C uh, students do other things with other applications, surfing the net and message ch and chat, playing games. We would like to track these activities so we have more accurate or better measure on on-task activity activity time spent on CXP related activities. Possible solutions, monitor process manager for applications they run. But it's still possible that they have their 
browser on, but there is, they are not doing anything with the browser. It's possible. So there's still some, 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 some disadvantage. I mean, with, with this possible solution, we are looking into it. Uh, wireless deployment. Uh, current design, the database access uses TCP, which is a bad thing. <laughs> And uh, low throughput, TCP slows down its trans transmission rate for every lost packet because it says, well, since I'm losing packets, let me slow down. Uh, also, lack of reliability causes database connections to crawl to a halt. One solution, one possible solution is to use one machine to log everything, like the logger, uh, like an archival service, a, 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 a monitor, a observer of the multicast. Pros, that means, uh, in terms of pros, only one database connection is required, so fewer throughput issues, but you can also run into ordering issues. Uh, actually, for example, when we do, uh, let me see, do I have it here? Uh, one thing that we found with our late join uh, uh, solution is uh, when a packet's lost, we will always try to recover it, and when a late join, let's say in a, in a late join situation, when a student joins the, the venue late, you always try to bring, uh, recover the messages that have, been that have took a, taken place before that. And because of wireless uh, network, students get kicked out very often, yeah, at least in our, in our classroom. So they'll late join very often as well. And that would incur many packet recovery, and that slow down. And the students are so, I mean, just like Gino said, they're already text savvy. <laughs> the first thing, just, they couldn't even wait for three seconds. They start complaining, it's nothing happening, nothing happening, nothing happening. It was, I was like, please be patient. Uh, cause, and so we'll, we'll have to take care of this problem uh, in wireless uh, environment. And for wireless deployment tests, presently we actual students this is not a viable approach because it's unfair to students because they, I mean, we tested it three, four times with them and every time was, uh, thank, I mean, I appreciate their, their cooperation but it's to me and painful to watch, to, to let them down every time because <laughs> we tested ourselves on six laptops, for example, we tested it but it's nothing compared to a real test, uh, to really, really stress test uh, the, the, the system. And also, every failed test increases the apathy towards using the, 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 the software. And also, it's time consuming. So a popular solution, I, I, I discussed this just now with uh, Jason, probably a simulator or a test bed. Um, and acknowledgement, uh, we were able to do this because of Microsoft Research Conference XP grant. Uh, before that, it was NSIGHT and also the NSF uh, grant for our Java version. And then Adam is over here. I'll do this two out of uh, the workhorses of the system. Uh, they've been working very hard. Hong Zhang is my co-PI. And people at CXP team, uh, Patrick, Jason, Chris, and Chris, Chris is the, the former uh, uh, manager, and Todd. And people who help us test, Bob Riddle, uh, he helped us test. And David Levy and Gary Christensen over at Bellevue University. Uh, he helped us quite a bit, uh, allow us to go in there and change the setup of XP and Windows XP, the account, all, all sorts of things. And he enjoyed it very much. Uh, and Judy Evers, owner students I taught uh, in my class, Nobel Kandakar, Shirley Liu, and also Del Finkerson, we got a lot of support from him. He's the IS, director of the IS department of our university. He basically enabled multicast for us. Uh, very good, because usually sometimes, sometimes it's not that, uh, not that simple. And in terms of website, you can go to csunl.edu, uh, lkso, cxp plus, imind, uh, html, or email me. Uh, questions? I've got two questions for you. Okay. Um, one question I have is how many students do you actually have working on uh, the conference XP part right of this? Mm -hmm. Kind of two and a half right now. Uh, is that kind of what it's been for this year? Because you guys seem yes. to have accomplished quite a bit in the last year. Yes. Well, because of these two, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, and they do that as like graduate work type stuff, or is it done in class, or how do you get the work done? Oh, uh, grad work. I mean, by he, I mean, Adam is an undergrad student. So he's just an undergrad research work. It's not like done in class, it's kind of done no, outside, outside class. Okay. 
Oh, sorry. Second question I had um, with your monitoring of the students, like what applications they're running and stuff like that. Do you have any concerns about privacy or? <coughs> That's a problem too, because uh, for me, the ideal solution would be for me forbid them to even invoke, let's say, web browser or anything. But I don't know how. I mean, that's very prohibitive. Uh, what if I do want them to go? Okay, now search, search the web for this thing, and then to undo the restriction. And another way of thinking is uh, thinking. Uh, I'm thinking about is, is if I put them in a lab, and have control over the, all the lab machines. I put whatever I want to put on them. I have the image. Then I can actually restrict their <coughs> access to other things. I know, I know, it's privacy thing. Even with this, we are track. We told them we are tracking a lot of things. Don't I mean? Sometimes they forgot about that. They start chatting and saying things that. Was like, Ooh. <laughs> 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 but it was like, oh wow. And so I told them, hey, we are tracking your stuff. <laughs> be, 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 be sensible. Be, be, be. Well, in the data <laughs> Just to follow up on that issue alone, the tracking. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's a privacy piece, but the students seem to object to the fact. Are tracking them? No. No. We, when we did this with Java version, nobody complained. When we did this with uh, this version, no one complained. You've got some great students at the University of Nebraska, is all I know. Okay. They're all freshmen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is true. The first one was a freshman. <laughs> did you have to go through any special procedures, human subjects, or anything to get Yeah, for yes, yes. We had to, for example, we had, for, for, for the. Java version, we go through the IRB approval student consent form. Since they're all freshmen, some of them actually is underage, so we have to ask the parent to sign the consent form. And they, may, they have to, if they don't agree to it, we cannot use the data. For this one, because we are still in testing form, we ask, just ask them to test. We are not using any data. We are not, not going to publish any data. So we, haven't, we, we have the IRB approval, but we, are not, we haven't asked them to con sign anything yet. But yes, we have to go through that, otherwise we'll be in big trouble. Yes. And so how is this related to maybe any existing uh, student tracking systems like uh, uh, you know the, the systems where you keep uh, their uh, their grades and everything? Is there you mean force management, management system? Uh, at one point we were talking to uh, Blackboard uh, when we talk about the Java version to embed Java, the Java version of iMice into Blackboard. So Blackboard has a course management system. It's a course management system and publishing system. And that fell through. Uh, then it didn't, didn't get anywhere. Uh, but yes, we would we, we'll love to work with a course management system, and including administering uh, quizzes, pop quizzes, tests, any kind of assessment uh, with iMice. Uh, we can actually, because that gives us very, very explicit data that we can track of students' learning. Because uh, right now, the way we did our pre-test and post-test, uh, our testing is we have pre-test and post-test paper form. Ask them to do it before they go through the exercises. And we take a look at what they were doing in the, uh, to see whether this actually helped them enhance their uh, performance in, in, in the class. Uh, it's a lot of logging. How yes. did you actually uh, go from logging to the actual semantics, semantic meaning behind the actual actions? Good question. Because right now, for example, we have the semantic the attribute mapped from the behaviors. But we, the agents, for example, we don't have time to implement anything to do with it yet. We haven't, we haven't incorporated the decision support yet. In our Java version, yes. We have the additional support because that was, we started from 2002, so it's a longer time for us to actually incorporate uh, rule bases, uh, knowledge bases, and also uh, uh, that, that component. For this one, we ran into this wireless deployment problem we have to solve first. And so hopefully once we solve that one, we can actually make use of the mapped behavior, the, the attribute. Because uh, we want to, for example, one thing that we, when IMIS first was first uh, uh, promoted, it was promoted as the, the, the agent, the, the system, they can actually find the best values for you automatically. And we're using a lot of heuristics and uh, teamwork 
uh, behavior. Uh, that's one thing we want to put it back in for the uh, 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 this complex XP version. Yes. Other questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you.